Landlords in Canada are heading into financial hell as Canada enters a recession. We're going to dig into this story which shows exactly what is going on here. This GTA condo owner says he's struggling to make ends meet as tenant won't pay 20k in rent. And then you've got this emotional photograph. A Mississauga landlord says he's fed up with the bureaucratic gridlock that's held up an eviction order for almost six months whilst his tenant, who owes him about $20,000, lives rent-free in his condo. Now, the reason I've brought up a story like this is because I think this is going to become more and more common. And you're going to see lots of landlords who are going to be defaulting on their mortgage exactly like what happened in 2008 because they're tenants aren't paying them because essentially their margins are so tight because home prices have gone up so much they've become a victim of their own investment choices which was to invest in the real estate market and you know we don't know what this landlord bought at but let's assume it's within the past two three years it's going to be an insanely high price his margins are going to be so so thin he might have already been contributing to the rent because the rent wasn't covering the entire amount of the condo fees and the mortgage anyways. So, I don't sleep at night, I don't eat, said Roberto, who is a home inspector and a married father too. And that's pretty sad, um, to be honest, and they're trying to trigger emotion there. But it is sad when you really think about it because they are just human beings at the end of the day. And, you know, landlords get kind of branded like, really bad these days but a lot of landlords are genuinely nice people they bought homes in order to help people get into the market who can't afford homes and they're actually just providing a service now there are a lot of slum landlords there are a lot of bad landlords especially in canada and i think a lot of that has to do with the actual real estate market and the immigration system which is so so messed up that it creates kind of a toxic environment for landlords roberto said the tenant moved in in 2020 and by october 2021 had stopped paying her rent about 1800 a month and then it for some reason lists the condo address which i find just really weird and then it says here in its 2022 annual report the ltb notes that although landlord application eviction orders dropped from 46000 in 2019 to 31,000 in 2022, the time it takes for orders to be issued in a timely fashion has increased. The report states that the board aims to issue orders within four business days of the last hearing date. In 2019-2020, that target was hit 58% of the time, but by last year, that rate had dropped to 7.9% of the time. That just goes to show you how you throw more money at these government organizations and they just get worse and worse and worse to deal with as time goes on. I mean, it's no different for the government of Canada. It's no different for the government of Ontario. It's all the same when it comes to these government organizations. It's just more money and less services, <laughs> essentially. It has such a profound impact, particularly on small landlords. The frustration level is so high that as soon as they get their units back, they're putting them on the market, she added. Well, the thing is, when you think about that, that's probably a good thing because they're probably not cut out to be a landlord anyway, if that's the case. You have to prepare for situations like th this that can happen and go beyond like maybe the time frame that the government says it's going to take. You really have to prepare for all eventualities if you're going to become a landlord. I think becoming a landlord in a place like Canada is really just horrible thing to do. I mean, I would certainly not want to be a landlord in Canada. We've seen in a lot of rental units in Alberta, for instance, and they are just destroyed. They've been destroyed by bad tenants. In fact, it's hard to find a good quality one. Just as for landlords, it's hard to find good quality tenants. And really, it's interesting because the dynamic after 2008 wasn't that demand within the rental market just tanked. There was a lot of demand, but it was very difficult for landlords to find tenants that were actually of high quality, essentially. And I think that will be the case too. And you're just going to have evictions back up in places like Toronto, Mississauga, 
Vancouver and other places. I think it's just going to be a disaster when this recession hits. I mean, nobody's going to have an easy ride, but we often forget about landlords and the fact they're leveraged. Meanwhile, Roberto says he's slowly sinking towards insolvency. He says he's having to come up with 3000 to 4000 a month to carry the condo and his family home. It's a struggle. We live a very basic existence, Roberto said. I feel depressed, lonely, let down. Now, let me give you my perspective on investment properties. You know, if you can afford to get an investment property and it and even if it's unoccupied, you can afford to carry it then you can afford that investment property. If you can't afford to carry it unoccupied, then you can't afford that investment property because it could be unoccupied for a long period of time. You could have a tenant that doesn't pay you. It might not be that they don't pay you six months in a row or 12 months in a row. It might just be that they miss payments every now and then and then you try and get them out and that takes a significant amount of time and they stop paying rent. But you have to prepare for all these eventualities I think because you're taking risk when you buy an investment property. The problem is people think there is zero risk in buying an investment property in Canada and it's one that the real estate market is just ran with. You can buy this investment property, you can rent it out and everything's going to be fantastic while the economy is okay of course. But then when the economy starts to tank, unemployment starts to go up, it starts to really become problematic especially if you're raising rent I mean picture this you have a really good tenant you raise the rent on them and they turn around to you and say I can't afford it I'm gonna have to move out and then you say okay that's fine and then you go and advertise your your unit or whatever and then you get a tenant in there and they pay rent for three months and then they stop paying or you struggle to find high quality tenants when that happens or you have to then list at a lower rate because you were too greedy. There are so many different dynamics involved with becoming a landlord that people don't think about and especially in a place like Canada where in most provinces it's heavily regulated. Canada households credit market debt to disposable income. You know this I wanted to bring up this because this isn't just landlords that are holding this debt. In fact, when you think about it, it's mostly, if you if you think about probabilities anyway, and you think about renters, you're more likely to see renters holding more other debts than say people with mortgages. And people with mortgages, they kind of disguise it because they can go into credit lines and all that sort of stuff on their home. <laughs> they might not classify that as even getting into debt, even though it is. But anyway, renters financial health can often be worse than landlords and the probability if I was to generalize I would say that that is the case. So interest rates are actually affecting renters as well because a lot of them are holding credit card debt. I think this is so so key guys and a point that I really want to get across to you is that this households piling up credit card debt this is so so bad for the economy. This is almost like a leading indicator of an economic crisis that is coming. Credit cards are the last resort. Think about the interest rates that these credit cards are charging right now. They're the last place that you want to go. And I was thinking of actually trying to get somebody on from one of these payday loan places to talk about how their business is doing. I don't even know if they will even agree to that, but it would be interesting. Um, So you can see on a year over year basis, credit card debt grew at 13.8% compared with a 4.7% in 2021. So you know, you're talking about this massive growth in credit card debt whilst interest rates are soaring on that debt. That is telling you that people are screwed. They are fucked, to put it bluntly. So you have to really think about that because that means that we are not going into a good place. The economy is not heading into a good place. Food inflation, sky high, all these other things, they do not equal a good recipe for the economy. They equal a banking crisis. They equal a disaster when you've got debt at these insane levels like we have in Canada. So anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, you might like that one there. You might also like that one there. I don't know. Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. Maybe you'll be on to the next one. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.